always good to have you stopping by. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's March 18th. It is Monday. Now, before we focus in on the hot penny stock I got for you, yeah, you know what it is. <laughs> I want to talk to you about an interview I got coming up. This Sunday, I should be putting out an interview with the CEO of FLES, ticker F-L-E-S, Auto Parts for Less. I'll be talking with Chris Davenport on Saturday. By all rights, I should have that out on Sunday. Looking forward to that. Also, I put out a video on Saturday. It was part two of my live streaming event I do on Thursday. I get too many tickers, so we can't cover them all in the show. So I thought I'd be nice and do a backup. Well, me and Taylor had to record part two, and we did that on Thursday. Because it wasn't live, well, we discovered something. When you go between 75, 80 minutes, something goes wrong. We're not quite sure what, but it quits recording. So there was an entire ticker GTN that just did not come out on that video. And I apologize for that. But now I know if ever I make a video over 75, 80 minutes, it's going to have to come out in two parts. So we are going to focus in on a hot penny stock. I am a day trader. I trade penny stocks all day. These are stocks under five bucks and they can be found on any market. Now I'm constantly looking for stocks that have potential. And as day traders, we are primarily interested in that potential that pays us tomorrow or the next day. We like fast turnover. I love them. But potential comes in a lot of shapes and sizes. And one of the potentials we're missing right now and can take advantage of are the undervalued stocks. Stocks that are at silly prices that are making good revenues and have strong business and are a real deal right now. Now, before we leave this page, I want you to take notice we're on the news page and we have nothing here. There is news, it just isn't coming up here. So we are looking at Tilray. Tilray Brands is a cannabis company out of Canada. She does have headquarters here in the United States, but she's got headquarters in a lot of different places. She is on the NASDAQ, which is quite interesting. If you are a U.S. cannabis company and you touch the plant, you are not allowed on our major exchanges. As far as you can get is the QX on the OTC, and that's where most of our good cannabis companies are, on the QX on the OTC. However, if you're a foreign company in the cannabis business and you touch the plant, you are allowed on the major exchanges. And that's how Tilray happens to be here right now. Tilray is one of the largest cannabis companies in the world. She is the largest cannabis company if you consider Strictly Footprint, how far she has gone around the globe. She is bigger than any other cannabis company out there. If you want to go by revenues, I do believe Curaleaf would be the biggest company at about $1.3 billion a year. Uh, Tilray is doing roughly three quarter billion dollars a year. So Tilray, she finished the day at $1.92, and she's up almost 11% today. And as I said, she is on the NASDAQ. Now, we've got no description here, and because we have no news here, I can't get a description there either. So, as I said, I am using Yahoo Finance to get a lot of our information. I jump into one of the news presses that they have over here, and I got this description. Tilray Brands is a leading global cannabis lifestyle and consumer packaged goods company with four distinct and complementary business segments, including medical and recreational cannabis, medical distribution, wellness foods, and now they have diversified into alcoholic beverages. They have beverages in the cannabis sector, but they have now gone into the alcohol, and I don't mean just a little bit. Now, something you need to know about Tilray, she is a vertical cannabis company. She's actually a vertical alcohol company as well. What that means is they handle all their business from start to finish, from seed to shelf. They take care of every aspect of it, planting it, cultivating it, harvesting it, creating joints out of it or extracts or chocolates, whatever, packaging it retailing it and selling it to the consumer. They do it all. And they do the same thing with their brews. They make their own products and then they sell them as well. A pioneer in cannabis research, cultivation and distribution, Tilray's brand has an unprecedented and diversified production platform that supports a portfolio of best-in-class brands. They've got a lot of brands in over 20 
countries, including comprehensive adult use and medical cannabis offerings, hemp-based foods, craft beverages across North America, Europe, Australia, and Latin America. All right, so let's try to get some more information here. They tell us they're in 20 countries. This gives you an idea of the countries that they are in. They are swamping the uh, Canada and the United States. They are in the EU, South America, Africa, Australia, even New Zealand. Now, one of the things I really like about this company is that they are well diversified. And I'm just speaking cannabis right now. They deal with the medicinal aspect and the recreational, which are two separate complete markets. You have a lot of different laws in different countries. Some allow it recreational, some allow it medicinal, some allow both, and some allow none. So they are working in countries based on their laws. And those are two separate markets. Medicinal is medicine, and they charge a lot more for that. And it's the best, purest quality you're going to get. Another thing that Tilray has going on is they're getting a lot of export licenses, especially in these countries that have medicinal cannabis. Their medicinal cannabis is being shipped overseas to other countries where medicinal cannabis is allowed, and they have a lot of exportation going on. That is a big deal for them. They are also working in the biotech industry. They are using the CBDs, the THCs, the terpenes, and they are trying to come up with miracle drugs to cure diseases. Getting a little more information about the company, I've jumped over to their website. Now, I could show you pictures all day. They've got lots of different uh, subsidiaries, different brands, so they've got lots of different packagings. When you're in Canada, though, the packagings all pretty much look the same. They all look like medicinal bottles that came from your pharmacy, and that's the law over there. You can't make your packaging look pretty. You can't use celebrities to endorse your marijuana. None of that goes on up there in Canada. But they've got the recreational and they have the medicinal. And their medicinal marijuana can be shipped through the mail. Ours can't be done like that yet. So they've got lots and lots of subsidiaries. I do believe they have 33 subsidiaries now. But we've got more information for you. Still focusing in on the cannabis. They tell us that they have a strong line of existing earthy, sour, berry fruity and gas floral genetic pipelines. These are different types of flavors and smells you get with your cannabis. My favorite is that gas floral, the diesel. Oh, I really like the diesel. Yes, I am a user. I condone cannabis by all means. Now here's the real shocker to me. They have a genetics program with 50 strains of cannabis. Now, it's not like that's a whole heck of a lot. There's a lot of strains out there. But what gets me is if you're going to grow it, and I told you they're a vertical company, they have to grow their own cannabis and supply it to all of their distributors. Well, they grow it in greenhouses. You can't grow smokable, eatable cannabis outside. It must be grown indoors. Well, imagine how much square footage you would have to have to grow 50 different strains to supply all your distributorships. And that's the thing about being vertical. Each country, each state has their own facilities, their own cultivation. And that, that is a lot of money that they have invested, which gives them a heck of a lot of assets. Now, to give you an idea, as again, I could go through a lot of pictures, but this shows you how much they've got. They have gone through phase one of the cannabis industry beautifully, coming up with flower products, joints and bags of weed, uh, coming up with extracts and oils. Then phase two came into play. That's when companies started getting innovative, seeing what different products they could come up with that use CBD and THC. You could not make a beverage with any of that because it was an oil. We had to create a new nanotechnology science which allows the oil to break down into beverages. It would not mix with chocolate. We could not do it. We had to invent new technology to make it work with chocolate. So they tell us down here that they have a pipeline of 80 different products that involve chocolate, gummies, beverages, and snacks. 40 products across the flour, pre-rolled, and infused pre-rolls. Then they have 40 concepts crossing the vapes, concentrates, extracts, and topicals. You just would not believe the products they have coming out. They are covering everything from sublingual to film strips to nasal sprays to pills. To, I mean, they've got it all. 
Now let's get a little more information over here from the alcohol standpoint. The company a little while ago did break off and start to diversify. Now before I jump into that, I want to bring up a lot of other things that are quite important. Tilray has made a lot of acquisitions, both in the cannabis arena and in the alcohol arena. Back a while ago, Tilray, Afria, and Hexo were all competitors on the market. All of these companies were selling their own products, growing, getting big. They were all major players in the cannabis arena. And then Tilray comes along and she gets Afria. She gets Hexo. And now she is the biggest cannabis company in the world because of all of that. All of these companies are working in all these different countries with medicinal cannabis. They are working in lots of different countries with their recreational cannabis. And they have lots of other companies they have gotten a hold of. And as I said, they have lots of subsidiaries. The beverage alcohol division. This has been growing at leaps and bounds. They first started off not too long ago. I believe it came from Afria. I think they got Sweetwater. This was a little craft brewery that makes beer. And they held that for a little while. And then we had news come out that the company had made a deal with Anheuser-Busch and got eight of their subsidiaries, eight branded crafted breweries all here in the United States. Now, Tilray is the fifth largest craft brewer in America. Imagine that. You have cannabis over here and craft brewery over here. However, it's not just brewery. This is a picture inside of their own deck, their digital brochure. So I didn't go out and find this picture and just throw it here. This is in their deck. Now, I recognize a lot of these beverages. They have a lot of beverages already. When they came in with Hexo, Hexo had Truss. Truss had a bunch of hemp beverages, THC, CBD, hemp. Well, when the company got a hold of Hex, they got a hold of all those beverages, started selling them all over Canada because all of Canada is legal, started selling them in America in places where it's legal, and I'm sure they're in other countries as well. So we've got a lot of different breweries and different types of beverages here, but we've also got hard liquor. I see gin, whiskey, vodka. I was unaware of this. I did not know that they had hard liquor as well. So I find this very, very exciting that the company is not only into beer, but they are into hard liquor. Now this is a map. It looks like an excerpt from a bigger document. I don't have all the information here, but they show us all of their different breweries. And the brown ones are breweries that are in the top 50 of the United States. Looking pretty good. They've also got some top distributors distributing their craft brews to their local regions. So they're getting their products out there. So the company's made a big move in diversification. She was into hemp, CBD, and THC beverages. They're doing well. Then she broke off and she got into Sweetwater, bought a few more. I think they have 12, 13 microbreweries now all in America. But they may be expanding around the world. And now I see they've also got hard liquor as well. And I don't know where the markets are for that. And of course, you got cannabis, which is all over the world right now. Not literally, but they are the biggest company in the world in over 20 countries. So now you got an idea of what the company's about. I've left you a lot of due diligence. Let's go take a look at that stock now. So taking a look at the relative volume for the company. Oh, yeah, we've got it up and flying going from 17 million shares a day up to 63 million shares today. And I didn't see any fresh news that came out today. Share structure for Tilray. Woo, all right, outstanding share counts kinda high, but not as bad as a lot of cannabis companies I see. We've got about three quarter billion shares outstanding. I don't know what the float is. It could be up to three quarter billion, or it could be considerably less. A lot more due diligence. It'll be tough to find, I'm telling you. Finding the float for major exchange stocks is not always easy. We've got one heck of a market cap here. Look at that, $1.2 billion. We don't see that too often on a penny stock. Taking a look at the financials for the company. 
As you can see over the last four years, it has been steadily growing. Back in 2020, she was at $210 million a year. 2021, she more than doubled that to 513. 2022, coming through COVID, didn't slow down at all. She's at 628 million. And this last year, they dropped by 1 million down to $627 million. Now, keep in mind, this company, I do believe 2018 was the year that they started, which would be what, six going on seven years right now? So they have come from nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. I was investing in cannabis stocks back then. And all we had to go on was the property they bought or the greenhouse they built. They'd tell us that they had so many square feet and could fit in so many plants. We'd start doing math. They'd tell us how much it cost a gram. And that's how we figured out what the stock was worth by doing all this math on square footage. Now, here we are seven years later. These companies are closing in on billion dollars a year. And she's bringing home profit. We got $146 million at the end of 2023. Let's check out our quarterly reports. Nice, they're growing as well, aren't they? A year ago, we were at $144 million in three months. Every single quarter, it has been climbing. I sit corrected. We had one drop here in August of this year. We went from 184 down to 176 and then made it up and jumped up to 193 million at the end of November, 2023. And we brought home 47 million profit out of that. Take a look at that balance sheet. You're gonna like this. Cash in the bank. They have about $145 million in the bank, a lot of short-term assets, a lot of long-term assets. Total assets were at $4.3 billion. Looking at our liabilities, look at this folks, less than a billion, less than a billion, which means this company at $1.92 has $3.3 billion worth of stockholder equity. That's not profit that the company's brought in. That is the stockholder equity, what we can look at as the value for our shares. So this share price looks to be a damn good deal to me right now. Let's take a look at the disclosures for the company. All right, we've got a couple of 8Ks here and a bunch of Form 4s. Let's just take a look at these 8Ks. I can't remember what these are. Look at the headline right here, other events. Uh, registration. Looks like they're about ready to sell some shares in connection with the offering of 1.2 million shares. Uh, this looks like it very well could be a public offering. That's what that one looks like. 1.2 million public offering. I could be wrong, but that's what it looked like. This one here looks to be the same one. Yep, it is backing it up. Uh, this was 6.8 million shares. Looks like they've kicked that up so that they can make $12.5 million. That's about right, about two bucks a share. Now, this is what I really wanted to share with you are these Form 4s. Form 4s can be good news. These are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company stock, the regular stock, like me and you buy. Well, we're mostly interested when they buy them or sell them, and they can get them in a lot of different ways. Well, these are purchases. I've opened these up already, so we can just jump into them. First one, where are you at? There it is. So this is Denise. This is the chief strategy officer over here. Looking right in the middle. You can always tell if it's a purchase because the code says P. P for purchase. S for sale. There's lots of different letters. If it's another letter, it's something else, and I really don't pay a lot of attention to that. But this is a purchase. Our... Uh, Chief strategy officer just bought themselves 10,000 shares at $2.05. We also have the Global General Counsel, Mitchell. He has purchased himself 7,200 shares at roughly two bucks. Then we have, uh, ooh, Mitchell bought himself another purchase, sure did, 5.4 million at $1.87. Erwin Simon, the president and CEO, he just got himself 53,700 shares at just under two bucks. We got one more here. <laughs> Anybody adding these up? Uh, 20,000 shares. This comes from Tilway. I'm not sure what this is. Carl, there it is. Carl, chief financial officer. So we've got 20,000. 
uh, 73, uh, call that close to 80, 87, uh, 97. We got about 100,000 shares that have just been bought by the insiders. Now, chances are the price has been lower. I think we had a low here in the last three years of $1.40. And chances are the insiders have bought a lot of shares while it's been this low. She had a high of $108 couple years ago, more than three years ago, back before she had all of this going for, her, back when we just saw the potential, she was worth 108 bucks. And now she is down to under two bucks. So I'm sure that the insiders are loading up. Let's take a look at that news now. And as I said, there is no news here. So again, I've come on over here to Yahoo Finance and there is no news today. The most current piece of news came out four days ago. And I'm not going to jump into any of these. I just want to headline a little of it so you can see they are moving forward, making progress. March 14th, Tilray Medical receives approval for the first medical cannabis extract in Portugal. First mover advantage in another country. They're getting it on. Down here, five days ago, Tilray Wellness introduces new superfood products powered by hemp at Expo West. Folks, you're not going to believe this, but hemp is a superfood. I mean a very strong, good superfood. Truth of the matter is, if you found yourself on a deserted island by yourself, well, maybe you had a few other people with you, and you have nothing but hemp and fresh water, you would not just survive, you would thrive you would be extremely healthy because cannabis hemp has all the amino acids that we need, all the essential vitamins that we need. It has some omega in it. It has protein in it. Now I'm not saying you're going to enjoy eating your buds on that deserted Island, but now with technology and the way we process this stuff, they're making delicious products using hemp. And the last piece of news here, uh, Tilray introduces new naturally flavored CBG infused cannabis beverages. Now you might as well think of CBG as a CBD. There are hundreds of CBDs and every CBD does something different. CBN makes you sleepy. That's the one that makes you want to nod off. There's lots and lots of them and they're honing in on what each CBD does and seeing if they can make drugs out of them. Well, CBG is the infuser, it's the accentuator, it's the collaborator. What CBG does is it allows your body to make best use of the CBDs that are in there. It gives you an overall feeling of wellness using those CBDs. That's what CBG is all about. All right. That's what the company is about. They're into cannabis. They're into alcohol. They have got more products than you can possibly imagine. Definitely worth your due diligence. The chart, it's interesting too. She's cheap. She is breaking out. I like it. Let me show you what I found. Charting. It does the trader good. <laughs> We are looking at ticker TLRY. We're going to chart this on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We are looking at a one week, three year chart for Tilray Brands. She is falling off of that $108 high. Three years ago, she had hit $26, but she wasn't done falling. She kept falling all the way down to a low of $1.50, which she hit in July of last year. We had a couple of bounces off of that low, but she just keeps coming back to it until today. She is starting to break away. On our three year chart, we are a long ways away from that 200 day SMA. Let's take a look at our one day, one year chart. Well, our 200 day SMA is in a serious decline here. And right now, I mean today, right now, she is just starting to level off. Perfect time to be looking at this stock. Now, back here in June, July, we did have a nice rip. If I'm not mistaken, this came from the news when the HHS had requested that the DEA reschedule cannabis. Caused a lot of excitement across the sector. A lot of stocks were running. This one ran from $1.50 up to $3.40, well over the 200, but it's way too steep to be trying to break out. So she slipped and fell back up underneath it, made another attempt to break through the 200, still too steep. 
So she fell back underneath. And right now, she is tagging on to that 200, and it is just now starting to go flat. Our oscillators on our yearly chart look great, folks. Every single one of them are pushing up. Looking nice. Volume has been pretty consistent through here, but these last couple of days, it is starting to get stronger. Take a look at that six month, four hour view. All right, our 200 is all over the place here, as is our price following that 200. And right now, she is breaking out for the last two days. She was underneath every single SMA down here at about a buck 60, and she flew hitting a high today of $2.05. She did fall back, coming down through the 200 and the 9-day SMA, looking like a secure pillar to me, putting it down into the ground, saying, I need to climb higher and I don't want this to tip over. So that stab down, she jumped right back up and started climbing. This is looking beautiful. It's over the 200, floating on our 9-day SMA. All of our other SMAs are all turned up and pushing towards that 200. And when they cross, it could be tomorrow, these will be golden crosses, giving the price a turbo boost. Oscillators are looking great. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, going to the moon. Just like our MACD, you read it the same way. Lots of green bars in the picture right now. And our RSI is up there in the overbought right now at just about 72. That looks good to me. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. She is in a decline here, downtrending all the way until yesterday. That's when she broke her downtrend, and now she's in an uptrend. We have just had all of our golden crosses here, every single one of them. And you see what happened when they started to cross? <laughs> Turbo boost. She blasted up there. She did fall back. She fell down here to a buck 92 from that 204, and she's landed right on top of her nine day SMA. You could not ask for a better landing. Our oscillators, our PPO is leveled off. It's cooling down a bit. Our MACD's cooled down a lot. Right now we've got a negative crossover going on, and our RSI is still pretty hot. She is up there at 65, just underneath the overbought. Looking at our five day, five minute. Definitely a change of trend. She was going sideways, took this dip, maybe the crouch before the pounce, got up over top of that 200, and she took off flying. Had that dip here coming down through the 200, bounced back up, hitting that high. She has come underneath the 50-day SMA, and she is right there on it. She is struggling. You see, I don't mean struggling bad. I mean struggling good. She's fighting the good fight here. She dips underneath the 50 only to jump hard. She came down. She's rolling on the 50 right now. She really pays heed to the 50-day SMA on the five-minute chart. Our 200-day SMA is climbing. It's getting a little bit of rollover right now. And our oscillators on the five-minute are looking pretty cool. Everything looks like it's on a dip. I myself, I'd be watching for the dip down to the 200-day SMA and a bounce off of it. In either case, we really are not looking at this for a day trader's dream, breaking the bank tomorrow or next week. What we are looking at is a stock that is undervalued by who knows how far. We have, what, $3.3 in stockholder equity, right? They're in 20 different countries. They are in cannabis and they are in alcohol. And in case you didn't know it, that makes them a double banger for a sin stock. What is a sin stock? A sin stock is a stock uh, that has a business that we don't necessarily need, but we want. And when there's hard times economically, sin stocks always do well. Cigarettes, alcohol, now cannabis, entertainment. So this company's going to do well no matter what the economy is. And with two divisions now, alcohol and cannabis, I see some serious growth coming into the picture. So I like Tilray, especially for the long hold folks. She is already the largest cannabis company in the world and she's just getting bigger. And she's the fifth largest craft brewer in America. Think of the revenues that are gonna start coming in. Right now we're at three quarter billion. I can see her breaking a billion in the next year. Most likely will. Do some more due diligence, folks. There's a lot to know about this company. As I said, they're in a lot of different countries, working with biotech, medicinal cannabis, recreational cannabis, and now alcohol. I like Tilray. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.